friends, welcome back to the Film Alchemist Podcast, the show where we take the movies we love, break them apart, to find out what gives them their magic. I'm your host, Josh Groovy, joined as always by my friend, co-host, and fucking sidekick who needs to mind his business and hit his marks, Alex Dandino. <laughs> you greasy little bitch, Gus, get in the corner. Uh... <laughs> For today's... Spit take. That was an yeah, actual spit take. A, a real spit take. Before today's just hellaciously hilarious episode, <laughs> on the Shutter original Late Night with the Devil, a little business. Everyone, go to patreon.com slash Pod. Please, please, God, help us out. Please. It's like when you're a podcaster, it's like every day is sweeps week. And yeah. we need all the help we can get, right? We got to defeat the these algorithmic overlords, right? But the one thing the algorithm can't suppress... There's a small community of committed people who go to patreon.com film alchemist pod and give direct support to the shows that they care about for shows like us. It is the lifeblood we need to keep going. We thank you so much for those of you who do. It is super helpful. It is the thing, man. If you guys can, if you find it in your little hearts to help us out, we have a lot of great stuff over there. Patreon exclusive library, ever expanding feature length commentaries. We got a mini series. We're working on all kinds of fun mini series. So please go on over to patreon.com slash filmalchemistpod. Help us out. The YouTube Film Alchemist. You can subscribe there for free. We're on all the socials you're on, including now TikTok. Uh, you can go see some clips over there. We got fun stuff going on there. We'd love to see you. The email, awesome. filmalchemistpod at gmail.com. We're on all the socials you're on. Make sure to leave those five-star ratings and reviews to help us defeat those algorithmic overlords we discussed. All right. This month. Also, pod. make sure you check out Misfit Parade. Misfit Parade. It's actually my backdrop to my new sweet computer setup. Misfit Ew. Parade. Uh, to see all the short films that I'm working on. Uh, you can go to misfitparade.net. Like, we're in the 90s, dude. .net. I didn't even know that was still a thing. Well, we got one. We got the last one. Misfitparade.net to see all our uh, short film. By the time you guys hear this, Sugar Tits. It's very highbrow, classy stuff. Will have made its... Not only world premiere, but international premiere. We got into a Canadian film festival. Ooh. So there's a chance that your old pal Griff might be at a city near you soon enough with our, our, our new short film. So Misfit Parade. Bless it. it. It's a fun one. Ah! Like I said, we're not here to talk about me being a serial killer in a short film. We're here to talk about dancing with El Diablo, the devil for you whites, the devil. We're here to dance with the devil, whites. <laughs> Let's get ready. <laughs> just the way I said it, it just sounded wrong. It just really... It, it was like very, a Michael Bay level of culture I was injecting into Real that. jingoist there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not great. Not my finest. But that's what happens when you wrestle the devil. The Diablo. Right? So, late night with the devil. Tore it <sighs> up on the strong. festival circuit. Uh, been hearing about it for a long time. Finally made it shudder premiere you guys will be hearing this much after we always record in bulk and in advance Indeed. we got to get a lot of work done so that we can uh complete the october mega marathon every month guys we're not just mm -hmm. sitting here lollygagging so late well, night too, with the but... devil uh a brilliant high concept movie i'm surprised how many people i've met since it's kind of come out to the masses now who tell me that this movie sucks one really it's a great amazing concept does it have setup. some yeah. rough rough edges? Sure. But does it mostly deliver exactly what I want? Yes. And so Wait, the good high real? concept, the amazing performances, I thought this movie fucking ripped. I just think this movie rips, man. And I would be, I would love to really sit down because there are a couple complaints I have. Sure. For of the course. most part, though, I think this movie's a fucking stunner, man. I, I love this one. I've seen it multiple times now. Um, and always find kind of new elements to enjoy every time. So, Alex, opening thoughts on Late Night with El Diablo. Oh, I mean, I thought it fucking ripped. Like, I just thought it was yeah. metal as hell, to be honest. It's a with fucking you. Like, great movie. Like, there's no this movie. This is how you that... know we're in a golden age of horror when a movie like this comes out and people can poo poo it. Yeah. Like, for you to have the option to be shitty about a movie that this that is like this good is. What a luxury. My God. What a great time to be a whore fan. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, this movie is great. They're like the the conceit is awesome. The setup is fantastic. 
Um, and just the overall, the, like, b- beyond the aesthetics of, like, what you like about these kinds of movies, just overall, it's fucking awesome. Performances are cool. Like, yep. what is there to dislike about this movie? Like, on, I, 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 we all have nitpicks, but, like, on a broad spectrum, if you hate this movie, I, I would I would assume that you just, like, you're just being a contrarian, to be honest with you. Well, to go into this movie particular, right, and feel that it didn't meet your expectations is what I find bizarre. Like, you notice right off the bat, there's, like, 22 uh, opening title cards for all of the production companies that had to band together to make this A lot of money got put together. So, right there, you're like, all right, there's 22 production companies. That tells you something about what's going to happen. It ends up being a really cohesive tone piece, right? Like, I love the, the commitment to the recreation of this era, right? This kind of lost document, this lost tape, this master yeah. tape. The lost of, tape uh, thing is always outs. cool to me. I like yeah, that shit. Yeah, and they do it really well, right? The Like, are there some... The problem is when you have a high concept like this, there's just so many chances to lose your audience. Mm-hmm. Because you're asking us, like, like just basics. Like, who's the cameraman that just keeps filming them shit-talking all their coworkers <laughs> behind? Like, if you've ever worked on anything like this, that shit spreads fast. Real fast, yep. right? Uh, who's doing that amazing Dolly pullout at the end when he's just murdered everyone on set? And he's like, Dreamer, wake up. You're like, is there still some guy who's like, well, it's not my Union 15, and he's like <laughs> packing the fucking there's, giant camera. There's some, there's some director. Go camera two. Yeah. Pull out. Camera two? Are you there? No. Keep going. Camera three left Keep two. Going. Camera oh, my three. God, wait. Camera, camera two one, it's you. Right, camera camera one, we need this. <laughs> Bad. This is for posterity. <laughs> but Boom, that's what I mean. It's up. just... It's it's a fucking very interesting. It's one of those things that when when I you make great. low budget horror movies, I was so jealous of this idea. Absolutely. I was oh, so yeah. jealous Same. of the concept of it, this. I love I think the preamble is such an amazing setup because again like telling you everything you need to know about like I, I like that. Like the the way that they did this like cuz I immediately I I thought of like, you know, Griffy Griffy's all it's Griffy Catnip the uh the opening crawl. I like some to sort read of some, before my movie. Some starts, sort of reading. Yeah. This was like this cool documentary. I'm not one of these in the whale philistines that need a, a newsreel. Yeah, he's not an Ivan. It, but there was this. I like, I like Sean this, Connery reading to me is really like the peak of it. But that's. Like, but I really did like this newsreel type thing about like who this character was, who this person was, like all the background you need. And again, I. It was one of those things was like, oh, wow, we're learning a lot up front. But nothing was like so – I didn't feel like I was just being fed information about what we were about to see. It was just like, oh, yeah, this guy was uh, second to Carson. So yeah, well, check out his last sets broadcast. Up this, like, there's a lot of information, but it's a, it's a, a necessity. Because once we start the show, the show yeah. is played as a real-time master tape. Mm-hmm. Right where he says now a message, and some fucking narc rat <laughs> films them behind the scenes, and that's it. That's all we get. Yeah. It is about a one hour runtime of this is or a little over. Right, this is what we're doing. Right, the ratings come in good, so they let him extend a little. Sure, mm-hmm. you have to get that exposition in. Right, they have one cutaway, and it's to the package they have for Doctor June and the young girl. Right. That explains the cult and this and that. But it is, it's this, right? There's this guy. He wants to be number one. He's this corny fucking late night bitch. Johnny Carson's killing him. Uh, They have that great quote, right? He knows that history only remembers kings. Okay? You're like, that's weird for a fucking late night cornball host. But okay, I understand where I'm at headspace wise. His wife suddenly died. They play the like little footage of his wife, you know. On the show, I it's fucking beautifully I, acted. I love that. Now he's back really fast. Yeah. Oh, by the way, he's in a weird sex cult in Northern California, which is based on a real thing, by the way. Yeah, true. And they say, and here's the tape that we finally found of that infamous night. And you go, fuck yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm in. Yeah. I have bought this concept. I've bought the ticket. I'm this ready to, to ride. This to me is found footage I can totally get behind. Because it's not found footage where the camera works so shitty it like makes me want to vomit. This is a brilliant conceit. Mm-hmm. And so a couple minutes in, I knew I was in absolute great hands. And it's actually fascinating to watch it start unspooling, right? Is it's like we're actually just watching a 70s talk show 
that, by the way, is boring as fuck and sucks. And you're like, <laughs> oh, my God, this is what TV used to be like. No wonder these boomers are so mad and hateful. Yeah, yeah. And then the, the horror elements so start coming in, and you're like, oh, my yeah. God, these this confluence of, of elements mm-hmm. is exactly what I came here for. Yeah. I mean, it's just the pedigree of, like, 70s television is so, like, well documented throughout the way that like you know you got your camera guys like you have these guys who are like it, it's such a well it's such a well oiled like mm-hmm. bought in premise and nobody's sitting there thinking there's because to me i think this is the other thing too is a lot of times when people do this kind of like ooh look it's the 70s there's still that like veneer of it's not the 70s it's 2023 as the 70s this does such a good job of other than like the actors who we've seen in other things. Yeah. There's such a great like oh, that's sure. not what's happening here. Well, it, it is it's, it's so brilliantly executed. Yeah, and one of the great things they do, right, is they have this kind of brilliant setup of this is a 70s TV show here, are the set dressings, all right? The set and that. Mm-hmm. One of the things I think is a great benefit of the movie is it gives itself this brilliant ticking clock, which is you really get these interstitials that are the length of a commercial break. Yeah. Right? Because if you get lost backstage a lot, right, mm-hmm. where Gus is, like, going through weighty tomes of news articles and this and that, and all of a sudden he's like, oh, my God, I found the word Abraxas. Now you're in trouble. Now you start wondering and you lose the fucking propulsion. Right? Yeah. In this one... He runs back and he's like, how are the ratings? Where's June? Oh, I got to run back out. They run back. Yeah. Christo's in the hospital. Weird. Runs back in. They do a segment. He comes in. Christo's dead. Runs back in. And you're like, it keeps that that pace. And then it feels mm-hmm. like you're just watching a TV show that we know is going to have this damning end, right? This is like truly a Damocles sword where you're like, I know it's coming down. Yeah. This is Chekhov's devil. I know it's coming. When? <laughs> so it's, it's kind of this perfect blend of slow rolling out information while we're watching this diorama of something very staged, but it somehow guards itself and keeps some authenticity. And a lot of that's just performance, to be honest. Oh yeah. No, this, I mean the set and all that stuff aside, their performances are fucking, and again, like, um, do you know how to pronounce his last name? I, I've never. I can't believe I'm asking you this, but I cannot figure no, out. How yeah, to you, you can't. You knocked on the wrong door, child. <laughs> I know. Why am I asking you? Um. So, um, David. So, uh, David Desmalkin. Uh, that's how I'm going to say it. Mm-hmm. Desmalkin is sure. what I'm going to say right now. That sounds wrong, um, but yes, you tried. I agree. David Desmalkin <laughs> is unbelievably good so because we've fucking, also. You know what's funny too. He's such, like, kind of a weirdo character guy. He always has I been. I knew this is what you were about to say, yeah. When I saw him, as I was like, you know what? I totally fucking buy him as, I like, buy it. America's, like, neighbor. Yeah. Right? It's, I was I was watching um, Conan O'Brien Needs a Friend, and he had Jim Downey on, who's one of, like, the prolific SNL writers. Mm-hmm. He basically, he wrote um, Update with Norm MacDonald when Norm MacDonald was doing the OJ jokes and got fired. Yeah. But he said, he's like, oh, the reason Norm was the perfect host was because if you turned the sound off norm looked like a regular anchor man you would not yeah. know if you were watching like shitty like local news mm-hmm. or if it was like a comedy thing and um david desmalkin does sort of the same thing where like you're like because we've only ever seen him be weird in things yeah and to like because i thought but i thought i was like holy shit he looks like so pedigreed and put together for this it was jarring. And he has and this awesome. really nice, like, even though we get the sense the character is completely full of shit and not authentic, <laughs> there is <laughs> yes. like a, a folksy charm about him, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Hey, can we get a little help over here? Like, he's one of those hosts that's like, when he has an audience, is still good to like PAs. Yeah. <laughs> even though you know he's like a member of the Grove and such things. Yeah. It is. It's. It's. It's a really strong performance that I just didn't expect from this actor. And yeah. it's honestly like it caught me because I kept waiting and be like, when is this going to slip weird? When is mm-hmm. it going to turn into more devil and less late night? Never does. Never. It's brilliantly carried out. Yeah. I mean, there's never uh, 
there's never a pull too far. I think that's like really the cautious it's not caution's not even the right word. It's really like the methodical filmmaker that these two guys are who just know like if we go way too hard into the next thing, mm-hmm. we're gonna lose the entire like the entire thing is gonna dismantle, which is why the last like ten minutes of that movie work. Because yeah. you're just like, holy shit. And it's hard because it's it's hard to do Faust, but you have to believe that like tourists in New York City would not run out of the theater while seeing this shit. Yeah, yeah. So there is this really hard balancing act they have to strike. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Where it's like, okay, like that was creepy, but they might think it's stage. We have a cynic there who's like shit talking everything. Um, kind of the late night jar jar, if you will. And you're like, uh, all right. <laughs> like it's a really strong act. If I only, the only beefs I have, right? Because actually I think, the story of a man who, like, you know, he starts as a local DJ and he wants to be a king. He wants mm-hmm. to do this thing. He has these creepy friends that do rituals. He succumbs to it. Um, by the end, we get this harrowing story after what we've seen, right, of he sacrificed his wife to this thing. Whether he knew he did or didn't, inconsequential. His wife dies of lung cancer so he can be the king. Mm-hmm. And we're watching this man be the king of the shittiest little kingdom. <laughs> and we're like, God, this is tragic and sad. And so the yeah, heart's yeah. there and the performance is there. And that, if I had a couple problems with the movie, and in fact, I think the ending is maybe like, the ending is such a mixed bag because there's stuff I love about it. And there's like a huge couple decisions that drove me insane. Um, I think the end of him kind of rewalking through episodes of his show, right? Mm-hmm. brilliant love the stagecraft yeah. of it love the camera angles like turn it off him screaming for people to turn off his show when all we know is that he's a rating sound great loved it loved it mm-hmm. loved it loved when the owls came out and the cultist and this and that and they're like you know doing the tall tree ritual loved it yeah. loved it loved when he went and sat with his wife right and she's like mm-hmm. take my pain away and it's all in front of this like ghastly audience right yes 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 and then Abraxas happens. And I go, oh, no. Like, what a horrifyingly bad character design. And not only that, oh. but the kills. So her head splits open. She's got, like, this weird lightning bolt from the TV. And yeah. then, you know, the girl gets, like, hung and choked by her, like, false necklace. All right. Gus sure, gets sure. his head broken. All right. When the cynic... The guy who's just like, give me the orgies, right? That guy, right? The con man who gets on his knees and he's like, I promise I'll I'll do whatever it takes. Like, I'll, I'll serve you. When that guy gets digitally murdered, where, like, all of a sudden we're watching a 70s tape, but he has extra tape grain and he's melting while we're seeing fake blue lightning and her face is kind of like, I don't know, like a fucking swingers party tiki torch. <laughs> There was a level of uh, digital facade that just completely eviscerates yeah, I, the reality that they've done such a great job manicuring yeah. and curating. I think curating. with, like, puppetry and all of the, like, all the, like, home... Again, all of the practical effects were so good that yeah, when you do see... even the worm thing, which was kind of stupid, it, it works perfectly for still what works. it is. Yeah. Yeah. When you start seeing that, because I agree, like, that's... There's t- like that is probably like the chief thing. I was like, oh, that's that's a little bit of a bummer. Is you're just like, oh, I don't need that. Yeah, like that ending I, I was- sucks. But then he it, when it ends with him holding the girl's dead body and dreamer, dreamer, you're sleeping, dreamer, wake up. You're like, all right, you got back on track. Like that's a yeah, great final it. image. But you're just like all this digital horse shit. Like why are you yeah, making the digital stuff a seventies yeah, like, archival? And then you're just like, now put cartoons in it. It's like, oh. Yeah. I think, yeah, the CGI sort of takes you out, which is, you know. Big time. It, I mean, it, you know, it's fine. Like, But again, they save it because they get back to what matters, which is this yeah, man again, reliving his Faustian bargain. A 93-minute movie with that many people putting money in. Like, those, the, like, that opening credits of, like, all those different production companies, that means this movie was, like, scraped together, which oh, yeah. is fine. Yeah. And that's the kind of movie. Those are the kind of low-budget horror movies And they fucking that nailed magic. it. And again, we they talk about this it. all the time, right? It's the Robert McKee thing. Movies are remembered for the couple great moments. 
this movie's got tons of those. This yeah, movie in so spades, you'll remember all the great stuff. That was a nitpick. I was just like, I Again, wish it wasn't a cartoon. When she I goes possession, it looks great. It looks Linda metal. Blair. It looks of the 70s, yeah. right? Like Exorcist has such an outsized impact on our pop culture mm -hmm. that you're like, yeah, play it exactly like what the Exorcist looks like. You're getting Absolutely. an extra layer of 70s believability. Great. And, it was, and then it's, it's like, great, oh, Braxis. But... And I was like, oh, boy. Oh, big yeah, you're like, flaming oh. vagina face. I was like, oh, boy. That's was... not cool. The, the cynic being killed in, like, an extra distorted tape from, like, the ring was one of the worst choices I've ever seen in a really <laughs> well-crafted movie. I think it was weird for – because, again, it's – it's the devil. There should be a little more cheekiness to like killing like a guy who's a skeptic. Like, oh, really? You're just going to like just you're just yeah, going to video drone him to death. Food? What has the Braxis like, been doing? On. Like, why didn't you lay waste the moment you came in? If you're yeah. playing with your food, that feels like a waste to just turn Gus's head. Yeah. I was like, like, what the hell? I mean, the gut like turning Gus's head is like, like the right, only cool good person. Sense. It seems in this whole studio. <laughs> He's the only one who's like, we should not be doing yeah. this. Hey, guys, but I think this might be not cool. And it's like, <laughs> get in your <laughs> Get out of here, you greasy Gus, little worm. get in your corner. Gus, get in your corner. Go rip oh, your tits out again, you piece of shit. That, for, that poor man. That poor man just I embarrassed on TV. <laughs> okay, this is like, because again... You nitpick the ones that you really love. Because I, I did love this movie. You take away My that digital other... horse shit at the end. It's pretty much... I don't know that I have even a qualm with this movie. I think my only thing was the... I think... And this is the one you give. Because you got to give one for all every movie. This is like the logic leap that you have to give. Is that... I think it's pretty hard to believe that a guy who was involved with... Um, the Grove the or Grove. whatever they're called... Yeah. Didn't know that he was sacrificing someone to get... Like, come on. You don't know this? I... Please. What I took that as is that he made a deal with some spirit. This was a Hail Mary, mm -hmm. right? Maybe he doesn't even believe it. Sure. I think once she has the cancer and yeah. it's terminal, whether he knows or doesn't is inconsequential. I think he made the deal not assuming it would be his wife. Because that's a question the movie asks is, did he really love his wife? I think by the end I would say, yeah, he I, did, man. I yeah, think he, he loved did. his wife. And, of course, that's why that's what gets taken from him. Sure. So I is there like, a naivete of a man who just keeps failing upwards? I can understand. Yeah. Again, like, I don't have a problem with, like, working my way around the logic yeah. at all. Like, it's he fun. He also seems to be enjoying plowing Dr. June a month yeah, later. Yeah, Dr. June apparently. So, like, you know. just. Maybe he's -E not a noble in the tree. husband type that uh, we thought he was. I mean, it's just, it's a very curious, like, it's the one thing that I'm like, eh, I don't know. But at the end of the day, I don't care. Yeah, I'm just like, enjoying the ride well, so much. And it, it delivers yeah, they do emotionally, it so that's fine. Absolutely. I'll give it's, that one. All I'm doing is nitpicking because, like, that's the one that I can come up with. But honestly, other than the CGI, the rest of this movie was fucking awesome. It like, was great. It was airtight. Great, great okay, stuff. so... I have some other things I'd like to at least discuss. I think the cynic in this movie just sucks the wind out of it. Every time he opens his dumb, stupid cynic mouth, <laughs> he was killing me. <laughs> and I get that that's probably just good acting, that he was such a cunt yeah. that I couldn't stand him. <laughs> Great performance. Sure. I don't know that every time we're about to go to commercial, I need this guy like, oh, Jack, this is untort. It's like, shut up. We're watching yeah. a movie called Late Night with the Devil. Was, we, this is the thing. No one's going to see that movie and thinks it's staged. Yeah. Shut up. <laughs> Do it once. <laughs> shut up. Yeah. I, I think that this was interesting is like when the cameras are off and they're in a commercial break, Jack at least watched like, dude, shut your fucking mouth. We're in the middle of this. Yeah. Like, it's like Christopher Nolan's Batman up. trilogy where he's just like, you know what? I don't want to be Batman. It's like, you already saw the poster and the trailer. You're Batman. <laughs> Get the punch and shut up. <laughs> I've had enough. Do your, your job. <laughs> shut it. Do your damn job. That I just paid 12 bucks to buy. I just, I was sick of his shit. Yeah. And I do think I the hypnosis bit 
that also felt like a bit of a swing and a miss. Because I was like, why didn't we just get one more really great moment yeah. with the possessed girl instead of him being like, I'll prove it's fake exorcism. You're like, mm. or hypnosis. You're like, ah, all right. Yeah. It's called I, late night I think that... with the devil, not the late night with creepy cunt. Yeah. Not, not late. That's night the second with... hard C I've dropped. That's my, yeah, bad. you've I'm, done two hard I'm C's angry. this one. I'm angry. I, I get it. I mean, like, like, you know, um, diets, Vin certainly is not like the star of the show, but he's doing this. I do agree. Like, I would have liked to see more possession. That would have been cooler yes. than like this is, fake. The hypnosis book was thing. called Conversations with the Devil, and you're on a talk show Shouldn't called talk Late Night with the, the Devil. Devil. And I get the slow build, but I was like, you don't need Christu and the cynic, right? Like, Actually, you got to okay. shrink some of that down and give me more. Like, why is it only Dr. June who talks to her for like two minutes and then smacks the shit out of her? Why yeah. is Jack not interviewing the devil? When uh, that, when that Lily... was one thing that I was like, I'd at least like to like float it, it out to it, see if it was. Just there was me. more meat on the bones for that that I would have yeah. liked to have seen. But also, again, out. it gets back to that. They have to kind of slow roll it. And the yeah. format of these shows, we do have guest, 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 song. Okay. Yeah. I liked that. I'll say this, like, and I was really wanting it. And this, is, again, goes to just, like, great pacing. Is I really wanted some things to happen, and it wasn't given to me. I was like, oh, fuck. Yeah. I get why, though. Like, particularly, like, when Lily turns to the setting, she's like, what is your, basically, like, what is your fucking problem with me? And I was like, oh, my God, here we go. Yeah. It's going to happen. She's going to fucking twist a neck yeah. or some shit. Nope, didn't happen. I was like, I think that's all right. your point, right? Meat on the bone. Like, the Chris yeah. do, like, yes, he's a charlatan. And of that era, people wanted to believe in charlatan. Even now. All right, I get it. The guy was a charlatan, but now he's a debunker. Right. A cool debunker guy. Right? It's Everybody like, loves those guys. Right, Everybody uh, loves the guy. Yeah. Everyone, yes, loves, everyone the loves the guy who's at the magic show who wrong. insults you to your face constantly. I was just like, come on, we can do better than this. We can do a little more. I, I wanted I, a little more because that's the other thing. I One of my favorite subgenres of film, I love possession and exorcism movies. I think it's one of the scariest topics, period, right? Like whether it's real or not. Oh, yeah, horrifying. absolutely. I'm always interested in how, because I also think it's one of the genres that gets the most piece of shit movies. Like the batting average is almost as bad as shark who eats people movies. Like it's not good. <laughs> like the exorcism possession is like a real bottom of the barrel kind of genre, but I love it. Sure. This one was really good. And I thought the possession scene was really good. She was giving a Fucking great metal, performance. Man. They Absolutely. set up this nice cult thing, the Abraxas. I was like, okay, I'm digging it. I'm digging it. And we just didn't get much of it. And then we went think, to a cartoon. Um, and I was like, there are a couple moments I would have peeled some of that out and really like. But there's also the case to be made if you just start giving us like 30 minutes straight of talking to the see, devil, it doesn't work. And anymore. that's that's sort there's of what no I was more thinking. Want. There's no anticipation. And that's what I was thinking when I was like asking myself, oh, why aren't we doing this thing? Why aren't we doing this? I was like, oh, because it's not a movie. It's a found footage broadcast of like an actual TV show. Yeah. I'm like, they're really it committing to, to this look bit. Like it would have been a real TV show. And yes. again, I, I was I'm like, you. reassured, you win. Like, again, I, I, I think it's the like as the viewer, I'm like, I'm wrong. really sure hand. Yeah. So when it comes tell. to these, I wish I could have gotten a little of this. Or I kind of am like, well, they earned my. Yeah, they earned the amount of me being like, well, you know, I don't fucking know. I wasn't in the room. Yeah, they gave me. A I just want it because movie. I want it. It's not because I need it. It's I so just good. Want I want more. I just want more. Ooh, yeah. give it to me. When I have an Ooh. Oreo, I don't need the remaining twenty that I'm going to eat. I have the taste of <laughs> an Oreo. Eat them. What I'm doing, uh, it, yeah, you know, you scratch an itch, it's fine. When you keep scratching and ripping off the skin again, it's not healing right. Yeah, two that's... very different metaphors for the same thing, right? <laughs> There were gluttons. There were shitty gluttons. Yeah. No, okay. Just, I, I do want to talk too. I thought the possessed girl was so good. She's so good. She was so fucking good. So creepy. So creepy. And man. I think that's the other thing is honestly, I think the performances in this movie are great. The producer is great. The stage yeah. manager is great. Gus is great. Jack is great. June is great. Like, 
a very, very powerful ensemble they have cast. Yeah. But I felt I mean, like the possessed little girl was so good. I think that also gets back to what I was saying before. I really wanted to see her floor it. She just let it rip, man. I mean, like, and that's another yeah, I, reason to hate the fucking digital fire vagina of Abraxas. Because you're like, <laughs> I wanted that girl to emote, man. I wanted her to rip. Yeah. I wanted her to do some fucking Tim Curry Prince of Darkness, like screaming at these sinners. And I mean, again, like the digital lightning, I'm like, oh, that looks so, so bad. bad. Like, so I, I don't, I don't, fucking like, bad. Like, it's okay for it to be like practical sparks. Like, that's how I'm used to seeing that shit happen. I don't care. Like, yeah. it's fine. But I, it, yeah, like she could have done it on her. I wonder if, like, this is the other thing too, because I wonder if there's. Like she did it, and they're like, "Ah, uh, it just doesn't like feel." You know, as, I don't like, buy crazy. it. I think no? that I what we saw of her. I think she could have gotten there. Like, oh, she. I don't there think for sure. that the script would have been beyond her ability to emote. No. Uh, you know, I am the bringer of vengeance. Right. I right. think she could have gotten there. And I, I guess everything else there. works so well. You're like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It was. I think great. I want it. I think ultimately. I, I think that's the thing. The ending is sad, but that's the hardest thing in a movie is an ending that satisfies a bunch of people. Yeah, yeah. And I think it still does because walking through that emotional, like retracing his steps, and that final shot and the final moment in the wife's bedroom are so well crafted. Metal. That's absolutely. What, that's metal. the payoff we really came for. The demon shit is just fun and games. Yeah, that's what we wanted, and that's what we got in spades. Mm -hmm. But I think it was just so good at a lot of things. I just wanted Mo. Yeah, I think that that is like the what an amazing thing to be able to critique a movie on too. Is like, oh, this movie does so many things right. Why can't I just have all the things I want for this movie? You're like, yeah. oh, if I could, just I'm not like, a filmmaker. Yeah, if, if like a buffet, <laughs> I could just fill my fucking plate with what I want, and you could make that for me. Yeah. If I had a hometown country buffet of this entire movie, yeah. it would just be overload. But yeah. they have such control over the story. Yeah. I mean, like, I, again, I, like, I'm so happy with what I got. And it's like, amazing because, again, I think my wife looked it up. I think David D., because I don't know his last name. Well done. Uh, I think he's, like, 52 years old. Is he really? Like, this is a guy. He doesn't look it. He looks very good for his age, if that's true. But this is a guy wow. who's been on a certain path for a long time. And he's kind of had a moment, right? He does a horror host character. So, like, he's in the horror. He's 48. Is he? Oh, fucking 80. He's 40. Fucking. Oh, she God thinks you're 5'10. He so he's 52. Amy. She's just, like, really, really cutting. You're a her. nurse, Amy. Yeah. Come on. You're throwing terms around loose now. Nurse Ratchet. <laughs> no, I just get as for all my old hyphy fans out there, no. <laughs> but, uh, hyphy, yeah. Yo, I, I think it was great. That was kind of my final point was it was so nice to see him have, like, a real starring role that really let him act. Like, really fucking act beyond just look like something Tim Burton drew in the corner. <laughs> I mean, this is the full goddamn. This, this is, is the actor's dream: is to find a role as complete and full of this, and be able to fucking make the choices that ha let you rise to the occasion. I was so ecstatic for this man, so ecstatic, and I was like, "This man's gonna get more awesome work because of how oh, yeah. good this role was." He is, and I'm again like. You know, we've seen him in all these huge budget superhero movies, and he's admittedly a huge fan of all that stuff. And he's, I like, I like him because he does that stuff, and he's like, oh, right. I love this. It's he so was much fun. on the and path then, of like, oh, that guy actor, yeah. And now he got like a legit he, starring vehicle that said, hey man, if you have a role and you don't think about this guy, you're not doing your due diligence. Yeah, like he was. And it's wonderful. Just, it's perfect because it's not the pocket you think he's going into. Yes. Like he is doing this late night host. He thing doesn't get and possessed. Not just, like, he's not like weird. the creepy, like, you know, Amityville no. dad. He is this fucking Midwestern cornball who got fucking mm -hmm. trucked by the devil. It's, it's, it's just fucking brilliant, dude. It is. I mean, I, I enjoyed the shit out of it. Like there's, there's no greater pleasure than getting to sit down and watch a movie and like have 
I was I was I was talking with a colleague a couple of days ago. Um, these new metrics that they have for measuring uh, streamers is now the ability that they have for you to not look at your phone while you're watching something at home. Yes, they and call it uh, second screen. Second screen, like yeah. how second screen is the movie? No second screen in this motherfucker. I was Definitely locked. Definitely not in, for dude. like the last thirty minutes. No, like, like once you is... see that possessed girl, I think it becomes a first screen. Yeah, you're like, this is the only screen I'm you're paying like, attention to right now. Okay. It's fucking next level, dude. Yeah, I, I really. It's a really insidious. Hats term, off, man. Right, like making sure your series is second screen enough because yeah. we're little fucking I also, junkies. I can't find the budget for this movie. But I also do wonder. I would, did they say he beat Carson? No, dude. Okay, that was like the was thing like, that was all like, that. Oh, and she, that's brutal. She, at one point, she tells him like, "I have a feeling you're about to be very famous." And you're like, "Oh yeah. fuck!" And at the end, if he didn't beat Carson, because the, the when his wife came on dying of cancer, one point <laughs> they still lost to Carson. Yeah, I and as like if he I lost thought we to would Carson get on this, that would be. The I was waiting for us days. to get a little postscript saying, like, he still lost to Carson. Well, because we don't know what he asked for. Did he just say to be famous, the most famous man on TV for how long? We don't know what his deal with the devil was. What if he just said, I, I just want to be famous. I want to be number one. Right? We don't know what the distinction is. But there was a nice fuck you where they didn't say, and that night Jack Delroy defeated Johnny Carson. <laughs> yeah. No. No, nothing. We have we have no idea because we don't want. Okay, well, that's then, the thing. They can't even give Jack that small little win to wrap it up. Well, then my question then to you may, would be: Then that begs the question: If at the end of the show you say, "And Jack Delroy for one night beat Johnny, beat Carson, Johnny Carson," you're going to have portions of the audience who go, "Nailed it! I would do that deal." I'd yeah, do right? that Fucking deal. No. Now we don't know. Do you think he – do you think – okay, in the context of the movie, do you think he beat Johnny Carson that night? I do. Yeah? I, I do because I think it adds to the pitifulness. Okay. I think I like Jack that. Delroy exposed the real Jack Delroy, the fucking philanderer, the orgiest. Right, right. I don't know if that's the right word. I think that's the second time I said it. But whatever I like, he is, I like right? the term orgiest. Yeah, this, this piece of shit, right, who hides behind this Chicago veneer. Yeah, I think him holding the dead body, meandering around the studio, that's the one night he could beat him when he was exposed. That's the one night all his shit was laid bare. That's what it took for him to beat Johnny Carson. I, mean, I think there's something poetic about that. But again, I, like I don't think it matters if he won because he lost. I don't think it does either. I just think the movie is so... The movie does such a good job with equipping us with the ability to sort of make our own conversation, make our own decision yes. about whether or not it happened. Yes. It almost, it's almost inconsequential whether or not he beat well, him. Also, because it's one it, of those. He lost so much in the process. He already is plowing Dr. June, probably mm. any number of other people. So there's a, a hint that we don't want him to win, but even if he did, who cares? So it is. I think it's, again, this is why I give them, like, the, all right, you didn't give me much exorcist stuff, fine. Because it does feel like they're giving me not what I want, but what I need. Yeah. Which is such a hard, hard balancing act. Because if you've written a movie, or you're in post, or you're shooting, it's like, more, 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 more of the good stuff, more of the blood, more of the tits, more of the whatever. This kind of control is not found often. No, and I think that's the hardest thing is for an for like, I don't know if this is their first movie, but for these guys to just say like, we got it. Yeah. That's that takes that takes very sure a very sure hand that I don't think most first I, again I, m- most early early to the gate early out the gate filmmakers have. Yeah, right? and that that's what impressive. I come away with, right? Despite the like CG or whatever, it's just a fucking well told story. With a brilliant really high concept, with immaculate performances every time the camera changes its point of view. And, you know, whether it went far enough or this or that, or if the, the narrative ever really panned out to much. Like, did it actually live up to the late night with the devil title? I don't know. I don't yeah. fucking care. Well, I love what I got. Yeah. 
I had such a good time. I loved what I got, and I feel like movie. they would know better than me that had they gone too far one way or the other that it doesn't work anymore. Absolutely. I. It's one of those you're just like, you got it. I it's have hard no, to make like, gimmick movies, man. It's very hard, and I think they commit to the bit in a way that is so impressive and not veering from that is probably why this movie is worth watching because you want so much more from it, but they're like, nah, you're good. I, I gave you what you needed. And you're like, shit, he's right. How did you know? <laughs> That's impressive work, man. Loved it. Absolutely It's a great it. film. It's a great film. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as we did. That's it for Late Night with the Devil. It's not our final dance with the devil. We have more devil films coming your way. I hope you enjoy them. Make sure you go to patreon.com slash filmalchemistpod to get even more Film Alchemist goodness. It helps us, and we also give you the goods. We give you the good stuff. The master tapes, as it were. Uh, make sure you go to YouTube, Film Alchemist. We're on all the socials you're on. The email, filmalchemistpod at gmail.com. Make sure you uh, go to TikTok. Five-star ratings, reviews, all that stuff. And check out misfitparade.net so you can go say that our movies Misfit. are not good enough and talk shit to us. That's how we like it. Um, again, we should all be thankful for how much killer horror movies we're getting now. It, it really is. What a time to be alive. It's a pretty sweet time. I'm not going to lie. For the Film Alchemist, I'm Josh Griffey. I'm Alex Dandino.